stop this at a certain point? No. Good morning. Uh, we're here in uh, the Strathcona section of Edmonton, Alberta, and uh, sitting in the garden of David Goa. And uh, David Goa is a Canadian philosopher and an Orthodox theologian. And he's going to speak to us over four short broadcasts on uh, the way in which we read the scripture and in some of the um, serious errors that are made in interpreting scripture in, in modern times. Uh, so we'll uh, hear from David over, I think, four 10-minute broadcasts on this subject. David? Thank you, Vladika. <clears throat> I think it's remarkable when we think of uh, the whole history of the reading of scripture and the way the scripture has been used, particularly here in North America and to some extent in Western Europe over the last 100, 150 years. Uh, we often <clears throat> assume that the ways of reading the scripture that we're accustomed to are normative. When we go back, I've had the pleasure of doing some work in the Jewish community over the years, and when we go back and look at how Jews read the scripture, we see something quite different than that. I think of Jesus of Nazareth. Um, how did Jesus uh, first hear the scripture? I was reminded a few years ago in my work in the Jewish community by uh, a lovely uh, woman now of blessed memory uh, who told me that when she was a little girl uh, in Toronto, she would wake up early in the morning and her father, who was an Orthodox uh, Jew, would be uh, chanting the early morning um, prayer and the, and, and the texts appointed for, for that time of day. He would be, of course, uh, wrapped in his tefillin and um, have his prayer shawl on. And she would wake up and come uh, trundling out from her childhood bed and crawl underneath his talit, his prayer shawl, and he would hold her in his arms as he continued to chant the early morning prayer, which of course is all Hebrew scripture. Imagine for a moment, I think it's reasonable to say, that this is also how Jesus first heard the scripture, trundling out of bed in Nazareth, and crawling up under his father's, his earthly father's talit, his earthly father's prayer shawl, and hearing the words of scripture not as proof text, not reduced to history, not as some kind of apologetic argument, but hearing them as prayer to the one Lord of all creation and of all history. First for uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters and in the, in the world into which Jesus was born, scripture is first and foremost prayer. It is secondly always heard. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It is meant to come to us to greet our mind and our heart through our ear. And thirdly, it is always engaged collectively. Indeed, there is the early morning prayer, there is the prayer through the day that Jews will say, on their own. But those are all committed to memory. They are already written upon their heart. It's interesting. For the Jewish community to take out the Torah and to read the Torah, there is a long-standing uh, discipline associated with that. You never take out the Torah and read it by yourself. You only do it when you have a minion, when you have ten men, or certainly in some Jewish communities nowadays, when you have ten men and women who gather around. And then you take it out in the context, again in the context of prayer, and you open it up to read the appointed text for the day. Why is that? Why this discipline? that the prayer, that it must be done in the context of prayer, 
and secondly, that it must be done together with the community. Well, I'm struck by this and, 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 and have a sense that the central point of this discipline is that the scripture being revelatory, being revelation, unveiling the mystery of the divine and unveiling human appetite and the mystery of our own minds and our own hearts and how we transfer that onto the divine. That this discipline is intended to say to the people, to say to the community of faithful, be careful, be careful. The word is hot. The word is hot. You need to discern its meaning, not on your own, not as you think about it in your mind or your heart, but you need to discern it in the context of the community who are all under the covenant, the community of people that you are living with and that you are uh, engaging in your own uh, struggle with and working out your own journey towards healing. So this sense of the community being central of the word being in the context of prayer and that the discernment process is one that goes on not simply isolated today but goes on over several uh, over over the life that you share within the community over weeks and months indeed over years there are some lessons from this it seems to me this notion of of uh, prayer being the surround for any engagement with the scripture and the first way we hear the scripture the first way we hear the scripture it is to be written upon our heart so that maybe someday it will fall into our heart it is to be read in community with others so that our own understanding is not the only understanding that is present and that is placed before us so we can hear how it falls on the heart and mind of others it is a extraordinary thing to be uh, part of the faithful community who has received the revelation but also it is and this is the final point I will make now it is important to realize that the revelation the unveiling of the mystery always has two sides to it on the one hand it is our entrance into our engagement with our encounter with the divine the creator of all that is on the other hand it is our encounter with our own mind and our own heart the appetites of our own society of our own moment in history and so the biblical revelation seeks to unveil both of those and to show us both of those in its extraordinary way.